Welcome to my channel Ravi Kumar Academy. This is a lecture series on single variable calculus. In this lecture, we are going to learn the applications of Lagrange's mean value theorem. We will solve some problems related to Lagrange's mean value theorem. Here, what is the Lagrange's mean value theorem? If you are given a function f which is continuous on the closed interval a b and also differentiable in open interval a b, then there exists a C in between open interval A and B such that F dash C is equal to F B minus F A by B minus A. Right? That means if any function that satisfies the first two conditions, these two conditions, then we should be able to find a such a C in between A and B such that F dash C is equal to F B minus F A by B minus A. Now we will see a problem related to this. Now we are given that A less than b less than 1, of course both are positive, then prove that pi by 3 minus 3 root 3 by 15 greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 greater than pi by 3 minus 1 by 8. Let, we are not given the function directly here, right, because in between the inequalities we have a function here cos inverse 3 by 5, so you take the function as cos inverse x. So, in, in this type of problems, you take the function that is given in the middle of the three terms, okay. So, and uh, x belongs to interval a, b. You can take closer interval also. Now, what we have to do is, we have to see, check whether the first two properties are satisfied or not. So, if they are satisfied, we can find a c. That means we can apply Lagrange's mean value theorem for this particular function. Right. So, for that, what we have to check is whether it is continuous on closed interval AB and differentiable in open interval AB. Here, you can take it as a closed interval also, no problem. Here, the differentiability implies continuity. If a function is differentiable, then it should be continuous also. So, you need not check the first one, you check the second one. If differentiability fails, we cannot apply. If differentiability is there, right, continuity follows. So, let us find the derivative first of all, f dash x, the derivative of f. Derivative of cos inverse x is minus 1 by square root of 1 minus x square. What are the troubling points of this function f dash? That means troubling points means where the denominator becomes 0 is a troubling point, is like a singularity. So, where the denominator is becoming 0, it is 1 minus x square equal to 0. When 1 minus x square becomes 0, the denominator becomes 0, that means x equal to plus or minus 1. But do we have these two points plus or minus 1 in the given interval? No. Because the interval is, here it is 0, 1, a is here, b is here. Because 0 less than, a less than, b less than 1. That means a and b are in between 0 and 1. So because we have, we are in between a and b, and you cannot have plus or minus 1 in between a and b because they are uh, between 0 and 1, right? So, therefore, uh, the denominator won't become 0 and there is no other singularity or troubling point for this function f dash. That means f dash is well defined. f dash is well defined in the interval a, b. Whatever the interval is a and b, what are the, whatever the numbers a and b in between 0 and 1, you always have this conclusion. So, f dash is well defined means what? f is differentiable. f is differentiable in the interval a b. In fact, we need only in open interval. In fact, you can have the conclusion in the closed interval also. So, differentiability implies continuity. That means f is continuous in closed interval a b also. So, f is differentiable and f is continuous. Therefore, the first two conditions or only two conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem are satisfied now. Now, because the two conditions are satisfied for this function, we can apply Lagrange's mean value theorem for this particular function. That means we can find a c in between a and b for which this happens. So, therefore, there must exist a c. Therefore, by Lagrange's mean value theorem, what should happen? There must exist a C in the open interval A comma B 
such that f dash c is equal to f b minus f a by b minus a f b minus f a by b minus a but what is f dash x f dash x is because what is f of x f of x is cos inverse x then what is the derivative of cos inverse x it is minus 1 by square root of 1 minus x square so this implies what is f dash c f dash c is minus 1 by square root of 1 minus c square so this kind of problem whenever you are asked to solve you should start with a less than c less than b you always start with this because c belongs to open interval a b means a less than c less than b so this implies we should get minus 1 by square root of 1 minus c square in the middle for that what we have to do initially we have to square c and then multiply by minus 1 and then add 1 and then square root and then take the reciprocal right so first of all squaring you will get a square less than b square c square less than b square multiply by minus 1 so the most important thing here you should remember is whenever you multiply an inequality by a negative quantity inequality gets reversed so this less than will become greater than minus c square greater than minus b square now you add 1 to this 1 minus a square is greater than 1 minus c square greater than 1 minus b square now after adding 1 you should take square root that means square root of 1 minus a square greater than square root of 1 minus c square greater than square root of 1 minus b square after that reciprocal 1 by square root of 1 minus a square less than whenever you take reciprocal the only two particular cases by multiplying something in inequality by negative quantity or by taking the reciprocal the inequality gets reversed so this becomes 1 by square root of 1 minus c square less than 1 by square root of 1 minus b square now multiply this by minus 1 because whenever you are multiplying by negative quantity inequality gets reversed greater than minus 1 by square root of 1 minus b square so now let us consider this what we have got is so what is minus 1 by square root of 1 minus c square it is nothing but f dash c so you write f dash c in the middle but what is f dash c greater than f dash c greater than minus 1 by square root of 1 minus b square now what is f dash c f dash c is this thing right you can replace f dash c by f b minus f a so minus 1 by square root of 1 minus a square greater than f b minus f a by b minus a greater than minus 1 by square root of 1 minus b square now because a is less than b we have b is greater than a and b minus a is a positive quantity so because b minus a is a positive quantity you can when you multiply the entire inequality by b minus a the inequality won't change still it remains greater than right here b minus a b minus a gets cancelled f b minus f a greater than minus of b minus a by square root of 1 minus b square right what is f of x f of x is cos inverse x so f of b is cos inverse b f of a is cos inverse a so what we have got is minus of b minus a by square root of 1 minus a square greater than cos inverse b minus cos inverse a greater than minus of b minus a by square root of 1 minus b square now we are asked to prove we are asked to prove that pi by 3 minus 3 root 3 by 15 greater than this thing greater than this thing, right 
So what we have to do here is you take b equal to 3 pi 5, just like in the previous problem, sin inverse case, what you have done there, the same thing we are going to do it again. You choose a equal to, so here you have cos inverse b minus cos inverse a, put b equal to 3 by 5 and a equal to 1 by 2. Why should we put y equal to 1 by 2? Because uh, in the given problem, we have 5 by 3 here and 5 by 3 here and the minus cos inverse a is not there. Right. That means we are going to add minus uh, add cos inverse a throughout. Then cos inverse a should be pi by three. That means pi by three is sixty degrees. That means cos sixty is what equal to cos sixty. Cos sixty is one by two. So that is how we choose a equal to one by two. And why b equal to three by five? We should get an answer here. Cos inverse three by five. Therefore minus of 3 by 5 minus 1 by 2 by root over 1 minus 1 by 2 whole square greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 minus cos inverse half greater than minus of 1 by 3 by 5 minus 1 by 2 by square root of 1 minus 3 by 5 whole square. So here it is 6 minus 5, 1 minus 1 by 10 into denominator you have square root of 1 minus 1 by 4 is square root of 3 by 4 root 3 by 2. It comes to the numerator it becomes 2 by root 3 greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 minus 5 by 3 greater than minus 1 by 10 multiplied by here you have 25 minus 9, 16 by 25, 4 by 5. So when it comes to the numerator, it becomes 5 by 4. 2 times 1 by 8. So here we have 5 times minus 1 by 5 root 3 greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 minus 5 by 3 greater than minus 1 by 8. Now we add pi by 3 throughout, you will get the answer. What is that? Adding pi by 3 throughout, what you will get? Pi by 3 minus 1 by 5 root 3. Pi by 3 minus 1 by 5 root 3 greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 greater than pi by 3 minus 1 by 8. Right. We have added 5 by 3 throughout. So, this is the required answer. Right. Actual answer is 5 by 3 minus you multiply numerator and denominator by root 3 here. What you will get? Root 3 by 5 into 3 greater than cos inverse 3 by 5 greater than 5 by 3 minus 1 by 8. So, this is the required answer. Okay. So, please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. Like the video, share it with your friends and classmates, comment your feedback. Thank you so much.